scientist who passed O-level chemistry aged seven and the ten-year-old music prodigy ready to hit the international stage to some genius is an arbitrary label the strict definition is an outstanding artistic or intellectual ability in short extreme talent 13 year old Archiana Chromeric fits the bill perfectly and she has a unique claim behind her gift. The earliest memory I could recall is probably when I was around four and a half, four years old. One day I started having these very amazing and mysterious visions. This voice was following me, guiding me through these galaxies. And he, I asked him, do you know, who are you? And I started calling him God. Akiana is an art prodigy from Idaho who claims that God told her to paint. For nine years, she hasn't stopped. I like to say me and God are both in control of everything. Like a, so he tells me an idea and I could just take that idea and make it better and polish it better and just put it into paints. So he's like my personal teacher, <laughs> my tutor. She was four years old when I knew there was something special about her because she was describing a lot of new things on spiritual matters and also she started drawing exceptionally well. Akiana developed an intense interest in sketching. By five years old, she was already drawing at a level way beyond her years. Myself, I thought she was dreaming. I thought there was something made out of an imagination. And when she started describing it more and more, it, it became apparent that this was actually something that did happen. By eight, Akiana was painting portraits on giant canvases. It kind of took me aback because we never read the Bible or we didn't have any kind of spiritual connection. With no artists in her family, she was completely self-taught. This is actually one of my absolutely favorite and most memorable painting. This is called the Prince of Peace. Um, when I was, I painted this when I was eight years old with oils. Many, many artists all around the world, they always ask me, so how did you do this and how did you do that? And I was like, I don't know, I just did it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very complicated for uh, you know, a child to, to explain what they did. The only way they can explain is through you know, painting or through their creativity. Described by art critics as a phenomenal talent, she has now produced more than 100 paintings, ranging from realist portraits to fantastic landscapes and the natural world. They can each take anywhere from 15 to 300 hours to complete. Akiana's genius could be explained by sheer hard work. Homeschooled, she gets up at 4 a.m. six days a week and paints for up to five hours a day. Just, just really cool to see the lips. Just... 
Sometimes, there are days, you know, sometimes when she's finishing up a painting, she might uh, paint for 12, 14 hours. And I would ask her to uh, take breaks and have something to eat or drink, and sometimes she would refuse. Akiana only studies the subjects she enjoys. She loves printing, publishing her books and poetry and art, and that's what she loves doing and let her do all day long. I don't ask her to ever do math. If critics say, no wonder she's a genius because she's devoting all her time for art, then it would be a better place in the world that there would be more people who are interested in focusing their energy to the fields that they are interested in. Every time I look at him and I, when I see it, it is, uh, I don't know, it, it, it blows me away. I look at him and I say, wow. Music is everything for 10-year-old Ariel Lanyi, a child prodigy from Israel. Ariel is more than just a pianist. He's a composer, too. Well, this could be an intro, and then there could be a, a total well, This different... was there before? Yeah. No, that's what I want to write now. Now, first of all, I want to jot down the intro. OK. Before we start anything. Didn't you have a subject? You had a subject. I'm going to do my opus 8, opus 9, and opus 10, so I'm going to work on opus 6, opus 7. I don't have to do so. Then I'll work on opus 8, then on opus 9, and then on opus 10. His achievements are beyond, far, far beyond, of any most gifted child that I've known. The question was, why do you take criticism from your teachers and not from your parents? And not from your mother. And not from your father either. <laughs> well, because my teachers are, are, are way smarter. <laughs> well, that's nice. That's a nice. Parents Gabby and Olga have raised their son in a home dominated by music. Ariel was destined to be a pianist right from the off. We were negotiating for a piano when, uh, when Olga was pregnant with uh, Ariel. And she said, well, why, why are you so anxious about it? What's the big deal? Is I going to come back? home from a hospital and, and start taking piano lessons. And I said, no, but I don't want to bring a child back from the hospital into a home that doesn't have a piano. Neither Gabby nor Olga could play the piano. It was for one person only, their newborn child. When he was born, he started uh, listening to music right from the beginning because there was a tape that his father prepared for the occasion. And from then on, he was listening to music almost 24 hours a day. There is a theory that um, very young children can be taught anything. They don't have to be born that way. But the earlier you start the education, the more you'll be able to achieve. It soon became apparent that the theory was working. It was less than three, just a little less than three, and, and we were driving in a car, and he was sitting in the back, and we were listening to the radio, and it was Beethoven's second piano concerto which I recognize, but I, I, don't, I don't know the key, and I didn't have the CD, so I told him, this is a piano concerto by Beethoven. And Ariel said, Ian, and I didn't have the answer because uh, I didn't have the CD to look at, right? And obviously I cannot tell. So he says, in B flat major. And I looked in the mirror and I said, are you sure? And he said, oh yeah. So needless to say, as soon as we got home, I take out the CD and I look at it, and it's in B flat major. By five, Ariel had already taught himself to play the piano and started taking lessons. By seven, he was playing classical concerts with an orchestra of adults. In a way, we created it to some degree by exposing him early on. And the little baby uh, doesn't have many choices. So he just lies on his back and you play Bach and you play Bartok and uh, he listens. Ariel is now firmly on the path for a life of music. But although showing a talent way beyond his years, 
He's wary of being labelled. I don't like the meaning of child prodigy. Because child prodigy is basically someone who can play fast. And not more than that. Not understanding music, just playing fast. And how are you different? Because I understand the music, I analyze. I... Are you a pianist or a musician? A musician. And are you a genius? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I will be one day, but not yet. Thirteen-year-old art prodigy, Archiana Kramerik, absolutely believes that her God-given talent is behind her extraordinary success. Today, at a local gallery selling prints of her work, she has come for a meet and greet with some of her fans. Have you ever had any visions of heaven? Yes, actually, um, for a couple years, since I was four to seven years old, I had constantly visions of heaven, and I use those visions and I paint them. When I'm thinking that, you know, you're at your age and you're already, you know, so established in this industry, you know, I look up to you. Oh, thank you. That's a very inspiration to me. Thank you. She's really been in touch with another dimension that is not common to our normal human experience. It's definitely projected. She's like a projector from God onto a canvas. An artist since the age of four, this is no mere hobby for Archiana. Her prints alone sell for thousands of dollars. At home, she is the sole breadwinner, with her parents and brothers carrying out specific roles in her business. Being the main moneymaker in the house is a great responsibility, but you, actually when I paint, I just don't feel like I'm making I'm money, I'm making the business, but it just feels like I'm having fun with the painting. But Archiana's genius has made her family rich. Since it's slow now and the economy's kind of a little flattened out, I probably do, or we do, I should say we, uh, 50 prints uh, a month. Now, a print is $1,800 US dollars to $3,100. On top of the $100,000 plus a month they make from prints, every so often they sell an original. Well, the most originals are between $100,000 and $300,000. Uh, our, our highest uh, one sold is 175, and that was a challenge. That was the, the one with the horse in the middle of the pine trees with the, in the snow, and it sold to a rancher uh, down in Texas. We try not to sell the originals. You know, she has control because all of this you see here is all hers. So when she's 18, this is hers. I walk out of the picture and I do something else. And the fruits of Akiana's labor. A new million dollar family home. She'll be painting in this area here. Uh, we'll have her probably easel here. I don't know if an easel on this wall or easel on that wall. But we also gave her a little kitchenette where she'd be able to have her daily coffee or tea, wash her brushes. But is this a normal childhood for a 13 year old girl? If a normal childhood is to sit in front of television and just be on cellular yeah, phone for three, is. four hours a day, I don't know if that's normal ch childhood. Um, I consider a normal childhood being able to, ser to, to serve other people, to help other children, to enjoy what you're doing, to be together with the family. Yeah, I agree on that. I have nothing to add to that one. She's not missing out a thing. <laughs> In Israel, it's 9 p.m. on a Thursday night, and 10-year-old musician Ariel Lanyi has a gig. At the tender age of seven, he branched out onto the jazz scene. This gig is supposed to start at 9.30, which you probably won't, so it'll start closer to 10. It'll probably go until about 11, 11.30. By the time he's gonna get home, it'll be midnight. That's obviously not a good thing. But if a kid plays jazz 
Uh, and if he wants to have an audience, he can get an audience at 4 p.m. Thank you very much. This is Uncle Jones. This is Ariel. <laughs> But can a child of 10 handle the strain of such a late night gig? between what is this child going to give to the world as he grows up and what is he going to sacrifice as a human being. As the set continues, the late night starts to take its toll. Ariel decides to persevere. It's now 10.30 p.m. How did I play? I could, I could do better. You know, I was very tired. We're going out to improve. We're going out to improve? He's not pleased. I know it flops. What? I know it flops. It doesn't flop. In exactly six weeks, Ariel makes his European debut at a jazz festival in Italy. Could it be too much too soon? Getting the balance right between protecting and encouraging a gifted child is incredibly difficult. But in Singapore, Valentine Corley is determined that his eight-year-old son, Einan, reaches his full potential. Complex processes in an organism begin when a molecular key fits into a correspondingly shaped molecular lock. Exactly. The key can be a relatively small molecule circulating in a body fluid, whereas the lock is usually a large molecule known as a biological receptor that is often found embedded in a cell membrane. Einan Corley's love of science was spotted when he was six years old. We discovered that he was interested in chemistry when he was at his uh, aunt's house. He found a chemistry book and he was reading it. And his aunt uh, saw him reading this and said, uh, Einan, you seem to understand that. And... Uh, he said, I do. And so she went away and got an exam paper, gave it to him, O-level exam paper, and uh, he answered the questions correctly. Einan taught himself chemistry on the internet and at seven passed the O-level exam. Now his father is battling to fast-track his academic career. Yehudi Menuhin without a violin is not a violinist. He's, he's a could-have-been. And, and the same applies to any of these children. If they don't get the opportunities they need, then all you've done is wasted their life and wasted the contribution they could have made to society. Huh? Tell me why I can't climb. The weight and the pressure. Daddy can't climb because he is so heavy. If he steps over here, he will ruin his feet because his weight exerted on a small area will cause a lot of pressure. He weighs 111 kg. And the surface area is roughly how much? Square inch, a square inch. A square inch. 
Can you imagine uh, what would have happened if Leonardo da Vinci had never been apprenticed to an artist? None of his work may have happened. To put a child like that in an ordinary school is a kind of abuse. From his perspective, school is in slow motion, which is how he described school to me one day. He said to me, the only, the only thing I like about school is my friends. So he, he, does, have, he does have that, but um, the actual lessons don't give him anything at all. Nothing. They cannot. Although Einan must continue attending primary school, Valentine has arranged for him, aged just eight years old, to also study chemistry at degree level. It's uh, only the third year students here get to do the experiments because they have gone through first and second year training. But for Ainan, he just comes in as if he's gone through the first and second year training already. He basically knows what to do. If I increase the concentration of nitrogen, what would happen? Reaction would go this way. Very good. Reaction would go to the right to reduce the concentration of nitrogen according to the Chatelier's principle. If I increase the concentration of chlorine, what's going to happen? Yeah, equilibrium will shift to the right. He has a mind of an eight-year-old, but the intelligence, which is roughly the same of ours, which is a bit stressful if you work with him. Subsequently, you need to wash it with sodium chloride. Nah? Tell me why we need to do this. I'll leave it to you to find out, OK? Why do you need to wash with sodium chloride? Anybody can tell me now? It aids layer separation. Yes, it aids layer separation. It's very obvious that he's a prodigy, and, and, and I, I think the, the people here are very welcoming of that. I, I, I had worried they might not be, but no, there's, there's no worries at all. But it would seem Einan might not be the only genius in the family. His father, now a freelance writer, originally studied natural sciences at Cambridge. When, when I was a child, I had many different gifts, but I, I don't think that they were um, given full opportunities they needed to be expressed. To your mind, any of Einan's ability inherited from his parents? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Um, the funny thing is that his scientific interests parallel my own age for age as a child. He starts expressing interest in chemistry at six. It's the same age I became interested in chemistry. Okay? So it's, it's the same pattern. And yet, we didn't guide him in this pattern. We just let him be. And he chose the same path. It's easy for a child in that position to end up frustrated. And having you know, known that situation myself, I don't want to see him frustrated. I want to see him develop at his own pace, in the areas of his interest, and become the full human being he is intended to be. Vicenza, Italy, and 10-year-old musician Ariel Lanyi has been invited to make his European debut at a prestigious jazz festival. But he's feeling the pressure. It's a big gig. OK. So right now, what matters is to put a smile on your face, a non-nervous a non smile on your face, OK? OK. This is a real jazz festival with uh, big names, and he is uh, playing alongside known people. So he's very, very nervous. We just uh, hope that he will revive before the concert. Later that evening, an audience of jazz aficionados gathers to watch Ariel and jazz partner Jean-Claude Jones. They'll know it's better. We practice with the metronome. And uh, we're more together. And we drop the team. That's it, you get it? Sono felice di presentarvi Ariel e Jean-Claude Jones. Gabby is in the wings throughout.
this time, Ariel's a success. Fantastic. Uh, I never thought that a little child uh, like him uh, could do something like that. A genius, more than a genius, I think. I was so surprised. Uh, how do you say in English? Uh, goose pump? I had a goose pump on my arms. Thank you, Jean-Claude Jones. Was it professional? I think so. Good. When a child prodigy stops being a child, then the question is, uh, is he, does he have the wherewithal to be a, a bona fide artist or, uh, or not? And if he doesn't, then uh, he can be a very happy amateur. If he doesn't follow a career in music, he'll probably have to follow a career in something else. <laughs> and it, has, it will have to be his decision, ultimately. It will not be ours. Baby, miracle, God, oh, 